Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you a fantastic free plugin called OTT from X for Records. You may have heard of this before, as X for do a lot of plugins, and OTT is a brilliant one from them, and it's completely free. I'll also put a link to the download in the description too. OTT stands for Over the Top Compression, and it's a multi-band upwards and downwards compressor. This compressor is split into highs, mids, and lows, and applies upward and downwards compression to each section. Downwards compression is the compression we're used to, a signal hits a threshold and the signal is reduced. Upwards compression is the complete opposite of that. When the signal drops below a set threshold, the signal is actually boosted. Both of these cause a reduction in dynamic range, so of course when they're applied together, the reduction in dynamic range is huge. So to actually understand this, I found this diagram quite helpful. You can see that our signal range has been reduced on both, but in opposite ways. Downwards compression is making the louder parts quieter, whereas upwards compression is making the quieter parts louder. So why do we want to use this? Well, it's all about giving your sound a really in-your-face feel to it. It can add so much punch, life, and power to a sound, or an entire mix. It's most commonly used in EDM and on bass, leads, and in mastering. However, it can work really well on other genres like metal and punk, anything that has that in-your-face feeling. As it reduces dynamic range hugely, you wouldn't really want to use it so much in a singer-songwriter type song. It doesn't mean you can't, but you have to be much gentler when you're using it. So let's have a listen to how it sounds on this track, with and without it, just on the stereo output. So of course the difference here is massive. It's clearly making everything louder, but it's also bringing everything much more forward. Now let's take a look at our parameters. Firstly, we have the depth, which is basically the wet and dry signal. If it's on full, you have the fully compressed signal coming through, and when it's on zero, it's essentially off. I always find a blend for this, but I'll demonstrate that shortly. Next is the time, which is the attack and release setting for it. I usually just leave this on 100%, it just tends to sound the best there, but by all means tweak it and see how it sounds. Next is the in gain and out gain. This lets you control how much of the signal you're putting into the OTT. This can really let you drive the signal because you can then increase the amount of downwards compression you have, or increase the amount of upwards compression if you drop the gain. You can then use the out gain to balance the overall level afterwards. Now below this we have the actual multiband split. At the top is the highs, then mids in the middle, and then lows at the bottom. On the right hand side you have the levels for each of them, so you can increase or decrease each as you wish. In the middle we have these three different colours. We've got the green, the black, and the tan colour. And then you can click to move these. The green area is the downwards compressor, so if you click and drag to the left, it will increase the amount of downwards compression you're applying. Similarly, if you click the tan area, and move this to the right, it will increase the amount of upwards compression you're using. This will also reduce the amount of the other compression, so if you increase the downwards compression, it will decrease the upwards compression. So in this example, we've clicked and dragged to the right, so we're increasing the upwards compression, and by doing this it makes it louder, and therefore decreases the downwards compression. This black line in the middle here is the threshold. When we hit play, blue lines will pop up from the left to hit that threshold, and we can adjust it accordingly. If the signal isn't hitting the black line, that's when the upwards compression kicks in, and it'll kick in more and more depending on how far away it is and how much you're applying. Lastly, at the bottom, you have the upwards compression percentage and the downwards compression percentage. This will take a fair bit of adjustment as it sounds incredibly overcompressed at 100% on both. I tend to have upwards on between 50 to 70% depending on the track, and then downwards on as little as 10%, but up to around 30 to 50. I regularly put compression on most things in my track, so I find that this is literally over the top compression when used alongside normal compression as well. Now let's take a look at applying this to some sounds and we'll start with the bass. This is a square bass that I've split into the lows and the highs, but we'll apply it just to the lows. For this it's a very constant sound and we'll use downwards compression more than upwards for it. So let's listen to it without the OTT and then we'll listen to it with default settings and you'll see that over compression. As you can hear, it's causing this really obnoxious distortion in the high end. This means that we're driving it too much, in that there is too much compression and the bass just doesn't like it. 
We're going to drop down the high end so it's just silent using the level knob here, which completely fixes that issue. Now let's have another listen. So that high end distortion's gone, but now it sounds a little bit fuzzy. So let's play around with some of the settings and we'll start by just dropping the depth down a bit. So it's certainly less, but let's drop these down now too. So now that's a little bit better. Now for this, I want to downwards compress the low end more than I do for the mids, so we're going to increase it on there. So I don't want to compress the mids quite as much as the lows, so I'm actually going to increase the upwards compression on here, which also basically decreases the amount of downwards compression on it. In this case, because these sections are being quite heavily compressed, as you can see by the blue lines, no upwards compression is actually happening here. The signal just isn't dropping below the threshold, so it can't take place. If I play and adjust this, it won't sound any different. We're actually just decreasing the amount of downwards compression here, instead of increasing the amount of upwards compression. I also thought the mids here were still a little bit too loud, so we're just going to drop them down using the level. Now I'm just going to adjust the out gain so it matches what it was without the OTT so we can compare them accurately with the mix. So it sounds much more full and quite a lot warmer as well. So you can hear the bass a lot clearer here, but the volume and the level is actually the same. Now let's have a listen to it on a lead sound. Here it is with the default settings, then we'll adjust. Okay, so that sounds quite horrendous, so it's going to take a fair bit of tweaking. First of all, we'll drop the depth again, and then the percentage of the upwards and downwards compression at the bottom. This sounds a little bit better and it's still letting it breathe. And now we can tweak how much compression is being applied to each multiband section. The low end in this is quite inaudible and I want it that way, so I'm actually just going to roll the entire area off. The highs are actually sounding quite brittle, so I'm going to use a bit more downwards compression and then just drop the level down a touch. I think the mids are okay as they are, but I may increase the upward compression on them a little. This is slightly different to before as this part is still quite dynamic. Although the majority of this is having downwards compression applied, the upwards compression is still kicking in during the quieter moments. Now I'm going to drop the gain like I did before and we'll compare. Now it sounds quite bright and it's cutting through quite a lot more. Lastly, let's look at it on our stereo output for a quick look at some mastering settings. I'm using it here with some basic mastering settings, so a bit of EQ and some limiters. The OTT will be before the limiters to prevent any clipping. What I've been doing here is using a decent portion of the wet signal at about 75% to help it come out a bit more, and I've kept the time at 100%. For the multiband settings, I increase the high end level just a little and then decrease the downwards compression on it here. For the mids, I've increased the upwards compression slightly and then also given the level a boost as well. For the lows, I just increased the compression on it just a little bit to help tame them and control them a little bit more. 
As you can see down here, I'm using so little of that downward compression, only 10% just to keep it quite light. And I'm also using about 60% of the upwards compression so it doesn't sound too harsh or too brittle. So as you can hear, it is doing wonders for this. When using this for mastering, be careful not to overdo it. It can make a track sound incredibly over compressed, but when used correctly, it can make such a big difference and improvement. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.